Thank you, Robert, for being here. <laughs> no okay. Robert came express to be with us here in, in uh, Portugal. He was with us uh, some years ago when he presented Cosmopolis in, uh, in, in Belém. And now he's coming. And uh, because most of the main actors of, uh, of uh, Cosmopolis, the, the, the David Cronenberg, Don DeLillo, Mathieu Amalric, were here this year. It was like a coincidence, and it was nice to see us all together. Don, he's here with us, but uh, he, he stays like all the writers. He prefers to stay on the <laughs> in the audience. Um, thank you for coming. I think most of the, of the people didn't see, I think, uh, Cosmopolis. Did you see? Alguém viu o Cosmopolis ou ainda não viram? Ah, some of them saw so, it. Okay. And I would like to to come, uh, you know, some years ago when we are, you were this enormous star of Twilight and you decided one moment uh, to accept the proposition of David Cronenberg for something uh, that I think was completely different. And I'd like to know uh, how did you felt the first time you heard about this project and how the things went. Uh, went uh, okay. um, well, th thank you guys for coming, firstly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I hope you, if you haven't seen the movie, I hope you enjoy it. Um, how did I say? I, I saw the script maybe a year before I started doing it. I, I, I got sent to me and I was, I read it and I thought it was a really, really special script. It just felt strikingly original. And even now, I was just watching it again last night. And it still, I mean, it still feels very original to me. It feels very kind of ahead of its time. Um, but I thought I was too young, and and it was just out of my reach. And so when it just sort of arrived, and, and David gave me the offer, I was kind of I didn't really know what to think. Um, I thought it was I just thought the script was so good I didn't want to mess it up, and so I was a little bit afraid to do it. Um, but then David, the first time I talked to David, he was, I, I kept avoiding his phone call for a week. And like every single day I would not call him back. And, um, and then when I finally got on the phone, he said, uh, he's like, what do you know? I was saying, I'm afraid to do it. And he's like, what are you afraid of? I'm like, I just don't entirely know what it's about. And, uh, and David was just saying, well, I don't know what it's about either, so, so I'm like, it's fine. Um, but, uh, and he was saying, but it's, it's juicy though, right? And I was like, yeah, it is juicy. And, uh, and um, to work from, from a point where we felt like kind of equals, even though I definitely wasn't an equal to him. Uh, yeah, it was a really satisfying experience. And uh, how did you uh, feel the first days of shooting with the working with someone like David and you were used to other directors, there was a big difference for you? I mean, the biggest difference was working with someone who had, I mean, thanks to you as well, like he had not a lot of pressure to do anything other than exactly what he wanted to do. It was the first time I'd really worked uh, with someone who had total control over the project. Um, and he was saying, and, and uh, Peter Sosinski and uh, and a lot of his crew we'd always worked with, they said, because the, we started off in the first week and uh, we were doing a lot of takes, like doing 15, 20 takes at the beginning for the first eight days. And his whole crew was saying, this is how he works. Like, he doesn't really know the aesthetic and the style of the movie until he starts shooting it. Um, and to see someone develop a movie that organically, uh, I. I'd never, I'd never worked under those circumstances before, and it was really nice. And by, you know, as, as the weeks went by, by, by the last week with the stuff with Paul Giamatti, uh, a lot of those scenes were just one take for like a four-minute take, and it was, it was like, yep, got it. Um, so, yeah, it was just, it was really interesting to work with someone with um, who had that level of control. And uh, you know, uh, what is I think unusual in these. Um 
on this film is the the dialogues, the quality, and but the, the difficulty of the dialogues for an actor. And that, how do you manage to do, to you know to really uh, you know incarnate these dialogues? It was in the, it, for the ones that are going to see it. It's it's incredible, you know. But you. Um, uh, how, how, uh, do you add, do you work a lot in the dialogues yourself or something or for before or it was just uh, natural that came from you? Um, yeah, I, well, I was working on it for a long time, but it was. Uh, I think there's something um, I, considering it's such a kind of in a lot of ways a very internal piece of writing in the book like one of my first thoughts when I first started reading the script is like it was you wanted to read it out loud immediately um, and even though it's a kind of very cerebral um, movie in a lot of ways like it, something about that dialogue is just so pleasurable to say like, and even watching it again yesterday I was kind of it's just not it's like this there's just something in the rhythm and something kind of in the humor of it and just it's just strange that slightly abstract um, English it's kind of it's just really it was just really really pleasurable to say it and there's just I think that you just sort of intuitively feel it and um, in the last scene with uh, Paul Giamatti it's an incredible scene that you made it in one take it, it it's, you felt when you made it that really was that take was enough, or 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 you think you, you don't you never think on that. You let the director think. On that. No, I was a hundred percent. No, that wasn't. <laughs> no, we need to do another take. I mean, the David always did this thing where if you did, I mean, I was especially at the time I was so unsure of myself that I mean every single I would do something a hundred times and still think that I, I could I haven't really got it right but David would always joke after if he did a take and said oh can I do another take he'd always be like what you think you can do it better <laughs> I'll do it. and he's like ah. and I was like well yeah maybe and he's like well are you questioning my authority are you questioning my are you, que are you questioning my taste and uh yeah, so I didn't really. I, I, by the end of it, when I when David said he he'd got it, then I trusted him. And you was David let you see on the video what you were doing, or you, because some directors uh, they don't like the actors to see what they're doing, but you were seeing what 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 you were doing in the video. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, I mean, I just it's. It, I mean, I think if when you watch the movie, it's kind of. It's so jarring, the world at the beginning, that uh, I re it felt so strange. I mean, I think at the beginning I was trying to, I would watch it a couple of times, but um, by the end it was just, you know, you, working with someone like David, I mean, you just, you do really, uh, you trust his confidence a lot. Um, and so, yeah, so by the end I wasn't really watching anything. And when you discovered the film finish, what was your first impression? Oh, God, what was my first impression? I mean, I think probably just how cohesive it, it was, because it feels so alien. And even when I watch it now, it feels, it's such a contained piece, and it really just exists really on its own. It's not just like a couple of, a couple of good scenes and, and some filler, it's just, it's like its own language the whole way through it, um, and uh, yeah, I was I was so curious what how people what, what people would make. I still am curious whenever anyone sees it. It's almost like a like I can judge a person whether they like Cosmopolis or not. <laughs> like, you know if you don't like it, know. we're not friends. <laughs> and um, one thing, but the, and I think you know. It, 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 after Cosmopolis, you really start a, a, an incredible career and working with very good directors and everything. You, you felt that Cosmopolis helped you with that. Yeah, I mean, it, and also, I mean, it's just such a, it's such, I mean, with David, it's just such a seal of approval. I mean, I remember going from Cosmopolis into the Rover with David Michaud and one of the first things David did was call up David, uh, call up David Cronenberg, and you know if you can get David Cronenberg to say, 
you know, he's all right. And then like, it's like, it's amazing. And, um, and then from that, you kind of, you can build pieces around, around David. But it still, it really changed my attitude towards, towards acting and towards performance. And, uh, and, and it changed my taste in, in, in the jobs I went for afterwards. Just, I mean, I was talking to you about it the other day. Like if I saw, if I saw this script now, and it was, if David offered me the Cosmopolis now, I'd be like, ah, and I would just, it would just, I would just do it so quickly. And at the time, I was so hesitant and frightened to do it, and I didn't know what it was, and it's, it's really influenced me a lot. Okay, now it's your turn to make questions. If uh, we have you here, don't know. What, who is the first one to do a question? <laughs> what? Não, espera aí, tem que o aqui dê-me dê aí um coisa um tali. Am I the first one or no? <laughs> uh -huh. Let's go. O quê? Yeah, yeah, to, on the film or on, on a, yeah, not on film in cinema. If you like to stay in Portugal. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I love it. I mean, I've, I've wanted to come back since the last time I came. Um, yeah, and it's very, very beautiful. Uh, yeah, especially Sintra too, it's great. <laughs> no? Okay. Questions about cinema more than anything else. Yes, go. Hello, Robert, first of all. My question is not necessarily about Cosmopolis, I'm sorry. I would love to know how, the, how happened the collaboration with Dead Grips because they are one of my favorite bands and I found out it was a really beautiful coincidence because you are one of my favorite actors. And I would love to, to say that I don't comprehend that thing about Good time is the turning point for Robert Pattinson. For me, the turning point, and I'm sorry to say that this way, is Cosmopolis and the rover, I think. I'm sorry, oh. and thank you for being <laughs> here. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what was it? How did Death Grips happen? Um, I was just a massive fan of them as well, and uh, I just think they were such an original band. And then they were, they were just sitting next to me in a restaurant. And um, and I and I couldn't really believe it. And then I started talking to them and became friends. Uh, and then I think that song was. Uh, I mean, I, to be honest, I don't even really remember recording it. <laughs> it was at about 4 a.m. And um, and <laughs> yeah, just uh, I think they were just around at my house and just I was just playing playing guitar and then. I and mean, they made it into that, that song, Birds, which is like one of my favorite Death Grip songs, which is it's kind of crazy. Could I also uh, say one more thing? Can we expect to see more collaborations with the Ed Grips? Because I read somewhere that we did a movie together, and I would love to, to know if that is true or we, what's going to happen next in terms of music. Uh, we, tr we tried to, yeah, we were in the process of making it. Um, but I think they used a lot of the script for one of their albums <laughs> and, and made it into... Uh, Which I think one? A I think a lot of it was on government plates, but a lot of the lyrics and stuff... Um, uh, but yeah, no, I'd love to. I think, I mean, all you can see from their videos, their videos are just... I mean, they can make a movie so easily, I just think. And they can make, they can make something out of nothing, too. Hi, uh, my question is, uh, who is your big biggest inspiration? Um, biggest inspiration. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it changes from year to year. Though you kind of, um, in terms of like film and stuff. I mean, I, it's you know, you, if you only had one inspiration, it would just, you know, you would dry up pretty quickly. Well, I'm probably not. It depends who you. But 
I don't only have one. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, boa noite. Welcome to Portugal, Robert. I would like to know two things. Uh, first, about good time, you said to Vanity Fair. Uh, everything, everyone in Cannes was talking about uh, how good time is your reinvention as an actor. And you said that you thought that when you did Cosmopolis, you did, re re reinvented yourself. So I would like to know what did you feel in that time that made you feel more as an actor uh, doing this film? And then, I w uh, somewhere, uh, some al somewhere along the movie, your character in Cosmopolis says something like, uh, send me to my DNA, show me something new. As a world-known world actor, harassed constantly by the press, by fans, did you ever felt like you needed to say something like that? Do you feel at 31 that you need to, someone to show you something new, someone to stun you? So that's my two questions. I mean, I think everybody feels like that, no? Like you kind of, you want to, you constantly want to be looking for, for something new. Uh, there's a line in it, I, I, uh, saying, uh, when, in Cosmopolis, saying um, when uh, Eric's wife, um, Elise, God, <laughs> um, uh, she, she says, um, it's something that like you just want to be inflamed, don't you? And I was like, ah, that's kind of how, that's the thing, I think one of the main things I related to. I like the idea of constantly wanting to be inflamed. Um, but um, how did I feel about, what, so what was the first part? Can, oh. I mean, it's, it's just such a weird thing with act, like, you, you don't have that much choice in your career as an actor, you're totally reliant on the script to come, the directors, like, whatever projects are around, and so it's not like you can say, oh, I want to do this, and I'll just reinvent myself, it's just, you look for scripts that you, that you just really connect to, and then, um, and, you know, hopefully, like, write, like write, writing, like, the writing in Cosmopolis is just really rare to, to, to find scripts, because, like, most people, um, you know, you don't even, it's, scripts are just rewritten all the time. It's, it's, so when you find a script which, I mean, there wasn't a single line that was changed from the time that Cosmopolis was sent to me to, to the end movie. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. And uh, it's just that the quality of it was just so high. And I think you're always just looking for, you're looking for something like that, you're looking for something special. I mean, you, I don't think you're, you can ever really be conscious of reinventing yourself. You just look for things that seem exciting and then hopefully, don't, I mean, sometimes they hit and sometimes they don't. <laughs> I mean, it's a kind of gradual process. I mean, with Cosmopolis, it's, it's it definitely felt like it was kind of a more, it, I just felt like there wasn't, I didn't, hadn't really seen anything like that. And so if you could be associated with something that felt original, then um, it's a kind of, you get high off it and you wanna, you wanna have that feeling again. You wanna look for something original again, rather than, I mean, I think before that, I, I was, I just kind of thought in quite, I don't know, sort of relatively basic terms, you, you would think, you know, uh, you'd read a script and think, oh, this, this movie seems like it could be like this other movie, and so I'll do that so it can be like this other one. But when you do something like Cosmopolis and you feel what it feels like to be out in your own lane and, and on your own, um, it just feels a lot better, and I think that kind of influenced me quite a lot. Uh, first of all, good night. I am a huge fan of your work. Uh, what I would like to ask you is in what ways did Cosmopolis help you to involve in your career as actor? To what, to what over it, sorry? Uh, to involve in your career to as actor. To evolve? Actor. Sorry, my English is <laughs> so <laughs> sore. Um, I mean, kind of like, it's sort of the same thing. I have the, the same kind of answers I've been saying. It's kind of, uh, it just... Uh, uh, yeah, it's just it's the same. Sorry, I can't think of another answer. It's it's basically like if you find something that's really you, you 
yeah, you just find something original, and then and then uh, it just makes you look for more original stuff afterwards. <laughs> Sorry, I can't think of a better answer. What's up, Robert? Hey, how are you? <laughs> How was your experience directing and acting on Good Time? Was it hard, exciting, and will you do it again? I mean, I didn't direct it. <laughs> but, Just um, it. I kind of wish. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, it was great. I mean, it's just kind of, it's the same, like, it's similar feeling to when, um, to when I found Cosmopolis. It just, the script felt so strikingly original and, um, and the Safdies just, they create, uh, they create an energy on their sets, which I hadn't really felt before. I and mean, then when you watch that movie, it's, it just, it feels quite out of control and wild. And that's kind of exactly what I was looking for at the time. And I hadn't really been given an opportunity to do it before. I and mean, then it's just, you know, you can, you can keep developing from there, I guess. Hi, Robert. Uh, welcome to Portugal. I'm a huge fan of your work. I want to ask you about your experience with uh, Water for Elephants, but because it's one of my favorite mov m movies, <laughs> and you were really different for you. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I, I guess that it was a different... Uh, I saw a different Robert in that kind of uh, movie, so I... I want to ask you about your experience acting in uh, in Water for Elephants. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it was just a really, really lovely movie to do. It's kind of, I think anyone who watches the, how the movie feels was kind of like exactly how it was to make it. It was just, just really. Um, it was just like a really warm atmosphere, like everyone was lovely on it. Um, I really like Francis Lawrence, the director, that he's kind of, it just, it felt like, um, just felt like a kind of a classic movie making experience. I mean, it I can't think of a better way to say it, but it really felt like you were making a movie. I mean, like turning up and there's a circus tent filled with elephants and there's Reese with a spoon dressed up as a, trapeze artist, I mean, it was just, you know, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a fantasy movie. Um, but yeah, it was lovely. It was a really nice experience. Hi, Robert. Uh, welcome to Portugal, first of all. Uh, I want to ask you, um, you have grown so much since uh, Harry Potter, and um, yes, <laughs> he was there. <laughs> And uh, I want to ask you, uh, where do you see like 10 years from now? Is, uh, if you want to direct uh, any movie, if you have any plans, um, what's your project? In 10 years? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah, I think. <laughs> um, I don't know, I mean, I think you, I, I, it's just this weird thing, I, I sort of fell into acting and then, you're, and then it took me about six years to even realize that it had sort of become my life and my job and so and then when I sort of realized that, then you try and start getting better at it, I guess, and then, um, I don't know, I mean, I, 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 still, I'm still, I still struggle with kind of this sort of imposter syndrome and, and uh, and just fighting against your own self-consciousness and stuff. And I think, you know, that every, every single job, um, you know, you. F I mean, I'd like to spend the next five years trying to find things that that you're really scared of, and and trying to break down those the the um, those fears. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's lucky because if there's something you found I found acting by accident, I mean, it's for, to to like a vocation more and more and more every year. It's like, it's just really lucky. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of, I just kind of want to keep doing it, I guess. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Well, I want to ask you two questions. The first is, uh, when did you know that you wanted to be an actor? And how did you prepare for your role in Cosmopolis? How did I know? Um, I don't think I've ever really no, <laughs> I just kind of, uh, I sort of, it, uh, 
I mean, maybe it's just something you, you, you don't allow yourself uh, to say you want to be anything, so as a sort of self-protection. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I definitely, I think I did, I, I did this one job where I was playing a young Dali when I was 19, and it was the first time I really um, started doing like research and, and, um, and kind of, kind of forensically looking at a part and I just realized how satisfying that can be and how you can really obsess over something and I kind of realized how much enjoyment can come out of it probably on that job. Um, what was the other part that preparing for Cosmopolis? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, how did I prepare for it? I think I just spent a lot of time with the, with the book um, and I mean, it's just quite satisfying, because especially because a lot of the, a lot of my dialogue is, um, like my character had the heavy parts of the dialogue, so you could really just run it by yourself, um, and find the rhythms in it. Um, when normally, like, you can't really find a rhythm in a scene until you're doing it with another person. Whereas with this, I was just reading it by myself in my hotel room, just constantly all day. Um, yeah, so I think that was it really, and just trying to trying to find ways to make it feel nice when you're saying it. One last ge question, please. Hello. <coughs> Sorry. Um, good evening. Um, I have a question because from David Cronenberg's talk earlier this week, he was talking about um, the adaptation of a book in relation to the screenplay and how, depending on how you look at think about the word adaptation. To him, it's like a recreation, and it's another work of art. Um, and so as an actor, um, in, how is your creative process in relation to what you just said? Because you, um, you said you, you had the book with you all the time. And then and what's the difference between the literature and the screenplay uh, for you to find your character? For Cosmopolis, for instance. Um, I mean, with Cosmopolis, it kind of the difference between literature and screenplay. I mean, so this is like a weird one, and it kind of made me, it made me really just approach things differently because I, I just really felt that the writing was so like weirdly sensual, and and so you know, normally you try and break down a script to find like what the what a character's motivation is or whatever your kind of just sort of silly psychology of like oh well this guy comes from here so he must think like this or whatever but I kind of realized with this you just because I loved saying the lines so much you just realize well I don't really need to know exactly why I like saying it like this it just feels right and um and it it be kind of becomes it becomes more interesting because I just don't think I, I, I just I only realized on this job that like when you're speaking, you have no idea how you're saying something. It's just it's all it's all intuition, and so it's and if you're trying to kind of you know if you're if you're practicing lines in front of a mirror or or you've got a, or you think this is how an audience is going to perceive the line if I say it exactly like this, it just doesn't really matter. And it's also much more fun to do a performance if you're if if you're just feeling it and if you're and if you're just trying to trying to have different sensations as you're saying it and um and yeah and i think that's i i mean it's weird to say this with don listening <laughs> but i mean i think you know you try and you read it you read a novel or you read a script and you get a certain amount of pleasure from it and you just try and uh, you try and uh synthesize that and then express whatever pleasure you felt um, in the performance. I think that works even if it's a really sad movie. It doesn't have to just be something uh, or a sad moment. Um, if you try and just synthesize what you were feeling at the time and something honest and uh, organic will come out of it, I think. Thank you very much. I think, thank you for... Thank you. I think it's thank okay. You. Now we're going to see the movie. Yes. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.